We are officially in the holiday season and President Bola Tinubu has announced a 50% slash in transport first for road users and train transportation is actually free. It is the time of the year and I'm excited already. We're counting down to 2024 and there's a whole lot on the table to particularly address the twin concerns of a revenue shortage and high debt levels. Tax is critical a tool for development to happen and Nigeria's revised tax to GDP ratio is 10.86%. Experts say with concerted efforts it could rise above that level astronomically. Now before the National Assembly is a bill to regulate the Federal Inland Revenue Service. Yes, you heard me right. And have a second agency to look into the nation's revenue collection and remittance process. We will be focusing on that in this episode of the program. And don't forget, we have our complimentary segments, Simplified Ease and Market Roundups as well. It is Christmas time. You need to stick around to know where to buy what? My name is Leah Kating Baba Tunde, and this is The Policy. Let's start a business of the day with a look at major happenings in and around the economy. Nigeria's public debt as of September 30, 2023 was 87.91 trillion naira or 114.35 billion US dollars. The amount represents the domestic and external debts of the federal government, the 36 state governments and the federal capital territory. The Debt Management Office DMO in its latest release showed that the total public debt stock represents a marginal increase of 0.61% when compared to June 30, 2023 figure of 87.38 trillion. This trend is explained by the decrease in external debt from 43.16 billion US dollars as of June 30, 2023 to 41.59 billion US dollars as of September 30, 2023 and a relatively moderate increase of 1.8 trillion naira in domestic debt. External debt decreased due to a redemption of a $500 million euro bond and the payment of $413.859 million as first principal repayment of the $3.4 billion loan obtained from the International Monetary Fund in 2020 during COVID-19. The servicing of these debts in addition to other debts, the statement added, are clear demonstrations of the federal government's commitment to honoring its debt obligations. The Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, FCCPC, is seeking the cooperation of Nigerians to further deliver support services to consumers in the country. This is following the recent outcry over massive counterfeits discovered in markets across the country, a concern the Commission shares and assures to work with sister agencies to protect the public from harmful practices and encourage healthy competition. The Executive Vice Chairman of the FCCPC Babatunde Irukera, while taking a look at the progress journey of the Commission, said, FCCPC has done a lot to encourage digital talent, which he believes will in turn help the country in putting forward best practices in businesses and service delivery. Irukera said FCCPC will continue to challenge bad practices, including seeking legal redress for aggrieved consumers. The African Development Bank has decided to withdraw all its international staff from Ethiopia immediately, but the office will remain open under an officer in charge. The bank in a statement said these measures will not affect nationally recruited staff from Ethiopia who will continue their work and remain in the full employment of the bank as it assured them and their families of its duty of care. These decisions, the statement added, followed the recent breach of diplomatic protocol and assault by Ethiopian security forces on two of the African Development Bank's international members of staff. The statement added that efforts by Dr. Akumi Adeshino 
president of the African Development Bank to resolve the issue proved abortive. Additional said the African Development Bank remains committed to supporting the country's socioeconomic development. As of 30th September 2023, the bank's ongoing portfolio in Ethiopia comprising 22 projects totaled 1.24 billion US dollars. The United Nations Commission on the Limits of the Continental Shelf CLCS has granted approval from the United Nations for an extension of Nigeria's maritime territory beyond 200 nautical miles, a move that will allow Nigeria to redraw the map of her sovereign territory in the Gulf of Guinea. Chairman CLCS Adnan Rashid Nasir Alzri in a statement said the development will enable Nigeria to accommodate the new area gained in an area that is known to contain abundant carbon and marine solid resources. Article 76 of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea provides that a literal state is entitled to make a claim for an extension of its maritime territory from traditional 200 miles up to a maximum of 350 nautical miles, provided it can prove that the subsoil and seabed of the submarine areas at the distance it is claiming are natural prolongations of its land territory. Telecom companies in Nigeria have told all subscribers whose subscriber identity model, SIM cards, are yet to be linked with their national identity numbers NIN to do so before February 8, 2024 or lose the numbers permanently. The umbrella body of the Telcos Association of Licensed Telecommunications Operators of Nigeria, Alton, said it has agreed to abide by the Nigerian Communications Commission's NCC Directive to delete telephone lines without national identification number NIN. The NCC had on 4th April 2022 directed that all mobile station international subscriber directory numbers MSRSDNs for which the subscribers failed to submit their NINs were placed on outgoing call restriction only and that the affected subscribers were advised to verify their means before being reactivated. But despite the limited service restriction, millions of subscribers have yet to submit their means for verification, necessitating the NCC to issue another directive on December 15, 2023, that subscribers who do not submit their means are to be barred on or before 28 February 2024, we have five or more MSRSDNs are linked to an unverified name, such are to be barred on or before 29th March 2024. Seeking an Inspector General for Tax is a project that has taken close to a decade at the National Assembly and it is back again and this time of course with some adjustments. I sat with the man behind that bill and here's that conversation. Philip Odi is the National Coordinator Association of Concerned Citizens of Nigeria on Revenue and Economy, ACCNRE, that has been pushing for the passage of a National Independent Tax Oversight and Ombudsman Commission Bill into Law, a bill that has overgone some changes in recent times. It's nice to have you, Mr. Philip, on the program. Thank you, Thank you very much. I'm glad to, to be here. Thank you. So you have been in and out of the National Assembly trying to push this bill even before uh, we got to this uh, point. And I'm tempted to ask, don't we have enough tax laws in the country yet? Yeah, that's a nice question. I think it is one of the things Nigeria need to know. Yes, well, the, the Nigerian tax law we have now is 1939 law. Wow. that have nothing that is outdated because then there was nothing like electronic service delivery 
today world of electronic service delivery that the data operating system no longer requires such type of taxation method. So what policy tweaks are we looking at? Yeah, mm, first of all is that uh, all those uh, formal method of tax in 1939 have a lot of uh, lapses, not because they want it so, but because if you don't upgrade to the today's uh, 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 best practice in the world of taxing, you won't get it right. So it's a different entirely, but yet, even if you do that based on what I'm doing, I, I, don't, I don't normally bother about what they are trying to bring up, because proclamation, declaration, rule of law is not what makes the difference. What makes the difference is what I'm asking for was the ability of the state to create a remedy in Shira in the constitution to safeguard the citizens against maladministration from the tax operators, I mean the tax collectors. Administrative excesses of the tax collectors so that the citizens will have some confidence in the taxation system that will even guarantee that the uh, voluntary compliance. So it's not law, it's not about law. My matter is not law. We're talking about let somebody come to mediate between the taxpayer and the, and the taxman, like so the who FRS. Is that somebody? I mean, the agency. It should be separate, independent uh, uh, auditing oversight agency that will even make people, even if they, let me just use federal as for example, if they are doing good. There was no proof of whatever they are saying because a little snack seen by one person, the person can claim it's so a python. So there's supposed to be two persons. Somebody collect the money, somebody come to oversight. Even in other, even in private businesses, they don't give somebody an entity like the size of collecting tax that run into trillions. And the person is the only person who can tell you whatever he wants because it's not even done, it's not done like that in the other part of the world. I'm asking of the National Inspector General for Task and Commission, which I have changed because somebody challenged it and said it sounds like police. It's not exactly. police. Yes. So, uh, Mr. Taiwo Yadelem said, change it, <laughs> let it be uh, something that does have nothing to do with the kind of policing. It's not good. So, it's okay. Independent National Tax Oversight and Ombudsman Commission. It's more lighter and it look better than saying Inspector General. So it's now very, independent, very independent, <laughs> independent National Task Oversight and Bosman Commission is the name now. I think I have raised a memo to that. Okay, so where are we at the National Assembly? And the Ninth Assembly, the, 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 the bill have actually lasted for several years. In the Eighth Assembly, it was there. It didn't work. They went, they went, the uptick started in the they are third year, and they ended up not coming to be. I, then 2019, after the election, I started again because I actually want this thing to work. Our people, some of them are only angry. They don't want to hear anything again because what is that? They don't even know what government is saying. Everybody's confused. So, but thank God, with the, from 2019 to 2023, the bill is at the is already in the committee on finance, both house. Uh, the other one is sponsored by Ben Carlo Benjamin Okezeka. Now the, the deputy speaker. The other one was the former chief whip, Ojis Okalo. He did first and second read in this way. In fact, it was unanimous support. No single vote was out from that place. The other place, the same. So now that we have come to the 10th assembly, I started again. I won't stop because it's concerning the life of people. And the people that are 80% of Nigerians are the people suffering it. The big man can find his way because he knows how to navigate. But the poor, the vulnerables, are the ones paying tax. It may be widow's might, but it's biting on them heavily. Okay, if I may come in here, um, there's been calls for trimming the public service. Wouldn't this further bloat the, the, the service? So are we now saying let us not employ who will make us have money so that we don't pay people salary? Like, I'm trying to break it down. So whoever is listening, I, will, I want the English to look the way somebody will understand. Are we saying we should lose trillions of naira 
so that we don't pay less than 200 billion. Because I'm sure, how many people are you going to employ that will, will, that will eat 500 billion? Because right now, international taxation, we are, not, we are not even talking about that. We don't go there. Have you seen them discuss about that? There was something they call profit shifting, base erosion, transfer pricing, uh, whatever crime you know, international taxation or whatever, multinationals and international citizens. And international citizens, some of our, ma our main here have companies of us. They don't pay tax to us. Eventually, they don't actually don't want to pay us, but because we cannot assess that money, you don't have inspector of tax. Just as they change my own, but in Australia, it's inspector general of taxation. In the United States, it's, it's, it's inspector general of taxation, but because they are complaining, it sounds like policy, I have to go down which did not change the, what the, 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 the objectives uh, 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 so should be. Should be, listen, the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, demand that countries should have a tax inspector, and they call it tax inspector without border. The OECD, UNDP tax inspectors without border, demand that countries should have, so that they can share what they call automatic information. Look, you're not begging for this money. If you do it, this type of money will drop here. And you'll be surprised that we are even the money we are we, we just ignorantly or whatever person's interest left overseas. Eh? It's more than what we're making on here. I'm, I'm tempted to ask now, um, but we're signatories of the automatic information share. Yeah, but we're not getting anything from there. You know why? This agency is not there. They refuse to share information with the OECD, with the Federal Revenue. They refuse. Do you know why? No country will share police information of, of uh, Interpol without you have your Interpol. Because if you refuse to have Interpol, they will not share information with you. Simple. If you go for anything, integration in the international treaty, and you don't do your domestic, uh, you don't do your domestic uh, homework, I mean doing the right thing, you'll be there for name's sake. These are our brothers and sisters who own companies. Some people have more than four companies. They may be different companies, this multinational, and so they can just get uh, um, people in the place they are operating, I mean, the, 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 the land where they come to open business, whatever type of business. Some have rolling mills, you won't know. They didn't say they are not paying, because if you are in South Africa, you pay. Everywhere you are, you pay. But we have 70% of that money. Anything that a Nigerian man pay, maybe 50% equity is his own money. Uh, when they are taxing, the general money, the fifty percent of it, who, which he owns, supposed to have inside that fifty percent, they take thirty percent of the attack of their own because it's in their land. The other one is our own, so it's OECD law. So now, because we don't have it, all this money has stashed overseas and you cannot touch it, and nobody will give it to you until you come and belong. Looking at the economy right now, we would say that it is not something that is a very, uh, would I say, palatable. We have rising inflation, we have rising exchange uh, rate differentials, we have projections already of slow growth rate in the coming year, the year 2024. So uh, basically, um, are we ready for such a change? You mean the bill? Yes, sure. Yes, they should. And but I'm asking this considering the fact that the subnationals are involved. I don't understand. The Come states on. will be involved in this. You mean uh, the Nigerian states? Yes. Yeah, if you get to the bridge, you cross. Let us talk about can they sign the bill? Is not what you asked? Are you saying, am I seeing sign of signing the bill? Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. The man that is holding a mat is somebody who knows about tax very well. Tunubi is concerned about tax. In the Niger Delta, nobody's guaranteeing 1,000, 1 million, several barrel of oil, yeah, 1.7 barrel of oil, a million barrels, oil. there's no guarantee with that. So you don't go and attach your trust or benchmark to what you cannot control. Tax is more sure way to save a nation. Let us even charge broad base, because already we are paying broad base. This money we are paying on daily basis, you buy, you pay that, you make, like I send you money, I pay whatever you buy, card, you pay, Tax that indirect tax we are paying on this little little couple, couple, 20,000 down, let me know, 100,000 up. That you see that in the market, it's only in Lagos. So there is a lot of money in that thing, but 
Because there was no accountability, that is what I was saying. So let it be bad to people's mind who are cheating us. But I know that 90% of Nigerians knew what I'm saying is the truth. It's bad that we can, we can be getting up to 160 billion naira per month in this uh, buying and paying VAT and this in a month. And it will give you close to 19 trillion naira a year. And somebody said we're not paying tax. The widows might taxes we are paying already is too much. Let's talk about that one first. So if there's a place like the place in international, I'm not, I will not collect them. If you touch it, let me tell you, if they do what I tell them to do, within one year, we'll get 40 trillion. This thing is done electronically. We no longer visit people or come and force somebody like the former time, they pursue you, they break your head, it's no longer in the tax. You don't need to even visit somebody's premises. So many, they read tax. It's even happening to the people that are not practically in your country can be still doing business here. Don't you know that? That all these electronic uh, operations are here. I don't want to mention that, but the truth is that they are doing business more than the people who are visible, visible who can go to their premises. So nobody visits somebody's premises. You pay your tax. It's a good way. But if somebody is collecting it, let the person collect it. Let somebody be a person again that will be, that the person, that, that account will come to. So that somebody will come in and say, what do you people get for us? Look, put a remedy. Don't allow the door open so that you can catch the good that come and steal your yard. Put a remedy that will stop it from happening. It's safer. And nobody will be hearing all this, yeah, 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 somebody carry money run away. No, 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 no. We are, that thing is no longer the fashion in the world. Look, let me tell you what before you go. There was a time in 2017, I said it the other day in NTA, when somebody was arguing that let us just do on boss man so that they will be reported to national and not ask, is it going to be independent or not? Because if it's not independent, it's better you don't start it. You cannot use Panadol to treat typhoid fever. Um, that is sure. Only provoking the, the fever. Now, in the United States 2017, the ticked, I mean, the IRS went and the, somebody went and destroyed backup tapes and emails running to about 492 billion US dollars. It was a war. They both snapped and they rep, called them, called them and said, What is happening? Because the information came. The IRS came and said, Okay, yeah, it's true. Let us go and recover it. Eight months. I always tell Nigeria this story because that's the only case study that will tell you whether we are using electronic service delivery today and you say, let it be on boss man without an inspector, you are wasting your time. Now, because not, America have their own 19, 1952, it does not solve the problem. They now bring TikTok. This is why when they were asking for this backup tape and email that is destroyed, they were able to survive it because they said, they come back in eight months and now first want to frustrate them like they normally do and say, we have looked for it, it's unrecoverable, and we have spent $18 million. The people say, what? Okay, don't worry. TikTok, Treasurer Inspector General for Tax Administration. The, the person that is heading the place, that is Inspector General, is not controlled by the IRS. So he was giving order, let my friend, we want to see that back of it because you say you, are, you have a service, go and bring it. He was, Within two weeks, they bring it. And they say we did not have any extra expenditure. Tita bring it back in two weeks when they have wanted to frustrate the house, saying they have stayed eight months and they were able to recover it and they declared in open that it's unrecoverable. Okay, I'm sincerely. Thank you, Mr. Oji, for Thank you. your time. Yes, indeed, we learn every day, and in this episode, we simplified balance of trade. Enjoy this graphic illustration, and afterwards, we go to the market square.
For more rates from markets around the country, do well to log on to our sister website www.marketnigertv.com. We have all the details there for you and enjoy your holiday shopping. The program ends here, but don't forget you can catch up with us on our various social media platforms and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It is Saban Media Services. Merry Christmas. Have a beautiful weekend with your loved ones and God bless Nigeria.